Welcome to the Billiard Network's next nine ball feature matchup. And as you can see, the familiar face of Joshua, the killer filler, about to break off. In this race to nine, ultimate break, nine ball match between him and the new Spanish up and coming export called Janos Sauto. You find yourself at the Euro Tour in Petric, Bulgaria, 2022. And both these players have won two matches to get to this stage. And this is their chance to qualify for the final 32 single elimination stage. Loser of this match will still get a chance to get into the, the final 32 as well. They would have to then win their next match to qualify. My name is Rico Dix, and I'm your narrator through this landscape of rotation pool. As you can see, Joshua had a pretty darn good break. What a nice way to start. So we're playing with the nine ball racked on the middle diamond spot. The one ball, two balls higher, meaning these players will be trying the cut break allowed to break from the sides of the tables and with their cut break they're trying to make the corner ball which is racked on the side of the rack from the side that they're breaking into the bottom right corner pocket as we just saw it we'll come back to that or else the side the one ball in the opposite side pocket as Joshua gets off to a perfect start so we'll see Jonas's break fairly soon because you wouldn't imagine Joshua not getting out from here. Stop. Position on the nine. Right, so Janos will be trying to break the one ball just on the inside from where he's breaking in our next rack. He's breaking from the opposite side, so he's trying to make the orange five ball bottom left and trying to bring his cue ball straight to the middle diamond of that short rail. That's too low, overcut it. As soon as your cue ball goes that low, it's, you'll find it very hard to come back to the center of the table. And you will find it harder to get yourself a shot on the wherever the lowest ball ends up. So a little 6-9 cluster, so there might be a little bit of safety involved there, or just needing a way to break it open. All right, chose the thin cut, was able to cut the one ball into the five ball, therefore holding the one ball that side of the table. Didn't get the full ball snooker though. No, jump cue coming up for Joshua. So now we have two clusters still, so most likely he who loses the battle for the one ball may not necessarily be without a chance of winning the rack. I'm not sure if he tried to kick at it, maybe he did. Okay, so first chance to navigate the one ball and the two ball being free, but then I'm going to have to try to break open that three ball, so you know, the angle is trying to keep about a 45 degree angle on the two ball. Meaning his cue ball will then be maneuverable towards that 3-5 cluster. much draw on his cue ball there. I mean, applied a bit of extra draw because he definitely didn't want to screw his cue ball back into the right side pocket, therefore overdid it. Needs a, a pretty quick high jumping cue ball to uh, clear that nine ball obstacle. I think he's favored to make this though. Where does the cue ball go? Nice. So, Jonas, Jonas, as we should call him, as I should call him, kind of like playing currently like Francisco Sanchez Ruiz played about 10 years ago. 
fast and loose. Sometimes maybe with a few schoolboy errors because of his hyper style of playing around the table. Hit that three ball way too thick, but ooh. I think he gave him a shot on the three ball. Now that touch on the six ball, did that open up the six for this bottom right corner pocket enough? I would imagine the nine ball still in the way. Not sure. Alright, so Joshua is gonna be forced to play rail first. So he's just measuring by a mirror system, the point at which his cue ball is supposed to hit the rail. And of course he's going to hit the red three, but he wants to hit it in a specific spot to make it. Adding top left for his cue ball to spin two rails around the five. Right, hit it too thin. Not necessarily deadly mistake yet. So what would you do here? I think he's trying to cut it into the corner nearest to us. Hmm. Cue ball will zigzag from right to left along the top half of the table. And we'll try to keep position where the three ball is now. Nice shot. So, you can count on it. Often the Spanish players have excellent potting prowess. Also excellent cue ball knowledge and just very nifty players. Often the players in Spain start by playing 8-ball. So they're very aware of tactics and just uh, it's a good base to have for your overall pool game if you start playing 8-ball. I think that 6-ball's opened up, so cue ball down the table, back to the center of the table. Ooh, that's a bit of a bouncy rail there. But we didn't expect it to come back that high, but that's a nice little nudge on the five ball. So we can draw his cue ball back about two balls width. As many of you may know, the Euro Tour one of the, or should really be considered as the strongest continental tour in the world. Every tournament, about 200 players, of which I would say about 60 or 70 can make it in the final 32 players. And I think about 20 potential tournament winners. It's where a lot of famous European pool players honed their skill. A lot of the Polish players, Germans, Austrians, Dutch players, you know, they get a chance to play the Euro Tour six times a year, which has been organized like this for about 25 years, I believe, if not longer. It's a very consistent... Oh, look at that eight ball. Last revolution of a ball on the table. Screwed everything up disappointment as Joshua trudges back to his chair. So push out situation. Usually if you can't keep a little, as much distance as you can, often try to get the cue ball maybe on the top bottom rail. If you can create a cluster, I would advise you do so to not make the game rely on Whoever gets control of the two ball wins the game, but often it's so hard with only six, seven balls remaining on the table in a nine ball rack after the break. It's hard to get a chance to create a cluster. So we we'll have to take this shot. We'll play two rails and now it's somewhere we're near the brown ball. The brown ball currently is, I would imagine. All right, you choose to go four rails, so. Beauty, wow. That's a nice little bonus there. Just nudge the five ball in a much easier position.
Right, so now it wants to be straight in on the six or an angle to the left of straight from where we're looking. Doesn't want to have a right sided angle or else, or else you come into contact with the nine ball. Never mind. I think the seven passes the eight. He's looking to cross the center of the table, like stun this cue ball. Center ball with the tip of left spin, stun it into the right rail, past the side pocket, and there's a lot of room there for success. Any kind of 20 to 40 degree angle on the 8 ball will make the cue ball travel directly towards the 9 ball after making the 8. And it will get that automatically by making this ball. Right, so this was Joshua's break, remember? These alternate break matches. You do very well to hold your own serve, if it were, and then try to break your opponent's breaking games. If you do that, that's how you can get like two, three, four game advantages, especially in a race to nine. It's really important. Ooh. This lower rail is a bouncy rail. It's like the cue ball comes off quicker than it came in. Or at least it's quick and that's not normally, shouldn't be normal, normal the case. The ball would always slow down after hitting a rail. All right, this cut on the nine ball for a 2-1 lead and breaking Joshua's serve. Oh no, hit it too thick. Ooh, sometimes these are all the chances you get against a player of Joshua's caliber. Ooh, that only just sneaked in. Snuck in. Past tense of s to sneak in. Right, game number four underway. Wow, what a chance that was for Jonas to take a lead and then now get this rack to potentially take a three game lead. Anyway, as it is, that is not the case. But all you can do, everybody makes mistakes in the game of pool, the best thing you can do is try to look to the future and focus on what you can change and not try to dwell on past mistakes, which is what a lot of players are. That's one of the hardest feats in pool, really. That's where the psychological and mental agility comes in. You know, if you make runouts, make good shots, you take all the glory, but you also, it's also all you're doing if you miss opportunities. Anyway, this is a pretty good reaction here, so a good break, a good position so far. Let's keep a straight in six ball so he can stop his cue ball for the seven. He can deal with any kind of angle on the six. The seven is flexible to be made in various pockets. But you'd like to have a somewhat of a clear idea, and you can always slightly deviate from that plan. So from Spain, we of course have the world-renowned and world pool master winner David Alcaide as its most famous export. And then, of course, in the last 10 years, and especially in this year, 2022, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, or as he's more easily known, Fran or FSR, most famous Spanish players, but there, there's also uh, Jose Alberto Delgado, who's trying to make a name for himself, and here, this gentleman as well, Jonas Soto. So, to all, all to play for.
So what to do with this blue two? Hmm, maybe bank it to the north side of the table and kind of stun draw your cue ball to hold it the south side of the table and try to make the 6-4-9 ball make some kind of covering wall or is he thinking about the push out? because this might not be an easy push out might give him a bit of a better option although then of course you leave it to your opponent to take or leave the shot so Joshua's taking the safety opportunity yeah. cut it so thin that both balls kind of rolled at the same speed and he wanted the two ball of course to have a lot more speed and go straighter into the rails to travel to the north side all right what do we see here pink four needs some quality positional play off the three so he's going to keep at least a 20 to 40 degree angle on his three ball whichever side to make his cue ball maneuverable that will do where are you going to play position for the four ball which doesn't go in this bottom left and right corner pocket so either play position for the side pockets could leave it where he's standing now somewhere there but then he kind of has the wrong angle to travel with his cue ball towards the five ball could bring it all the way to the this bottom rail middle diamond for a shot in the top corner and that would leave his cue ball also to the five ball Also pretty nice. And his cue ball roll over that line kind of gave him a lot of revolutions where he would have a shot on the four ball as things stand. Yeah. Straight in four. Follow his cue ball through. Make sure you give your cue ball a distinct amount of topspin so it doesn't kind of stop halfway. And that will do the trick. So besides the nine ball that Jonas missed, he's taking and making opportunities here against Filler. And it will be Jonas's break as well. So another chance to potentially take a two game lead, which may prove super valuable at the end of this game, or at the end of this match, that is. All right, Suto leads three to two, race to nine, to directly qualify for the last 32 of this Euro Tour in Petric, Bulgaria. And overcut it, second time he did that. Still made the corner ball, but again lost his cue ball in the lower half, on the lower quarter of the table. If the cue ball goes there after the break, it's hard to, for it to roll back up to center. So now what? I'm looking to push out. Again, in this instance, I would maybe roll the eight next to the four ball, make that a cluster, and that's a fairly good position. And now he's going to leave it all open, so whoever wins the battle for this one ball will win the game. But of course you have to give your, an opponent, your opponent some kind of shot that you know, Joshua has it, in essence control to either take it or leave it. If you make a cluster then this one ball is not the be all and end all of that rack most likely. 3-9 combination I spot as well, maybe you have as well. Let us know in the comments section um, any questions you may have, and we will do our very best. Ooh, look, cue ball. We will do our grand bestest to answer your question. Um, let us know where you're watching this from. I'm always so interested to hear 
where you are and what you're what you're up to besides watching this game. Maybe uh, maybe you're at work. Should be getting work done, but actually you've stumbled upon these billiard network world class pool matches and just can't get enough of them. We'd love to hear where you're watching this from. And as I usually ask, we'd love to hear from you who you would like to see featured on the Billiard Network YouTube channel. As always, it helps us. And in general, the world of pool promotion, if you were to press the like button, you can also subscribe so that anytime we come up with a new video, which happens more than once a week, you'll be notified automatically. All right, so Jonas also spotted that 3-9 combo, and he is going to attempt it. And with the 3-9 being so close and pretty straight lined up with the pocket, although he wanted to be where his hand is now, so overran position. So now you have to have a bit more accuracy to make this combo, but you have to put your money on. Jonas taking a 4-2 lead, you reckon? Oh no, hit it too thick. Undercut the three ball. Wow, two, two game-winning chances missed by Jonas. Bank the three ball back down table. Yeah. Use the five eight or one of them at least. Nope. So he's going to try to cut the three ball in. The cue ball would automatically hit the spot where he put his chalk just now, somewhere thereabouts, and therewith will travel for position on the pink four automatically. We'll hopefully come in between the yellow nine and the pink four. Oh, that's too thin a hit. Cue ball did what I told you it was going to do. So, I mean, no, no disrespect to Yano Suto, but he's just a bit of a rash player still. Although I did see him had a few good results at the UK Open, the Matchroom organized UK Open in London this year. And so many players in the world like him, quickly learning how to, yeah, how to play these top quality opponents take your chances make your chances don't get down on yourself I mean, you do miss chances because everybody does as you can see you know Joshua definitely also never a faultless player he's able to just put that aside and get inspired by his own next run out or game opportunities and therefore very much live in the present moment all right Another chance for Jonas. Showing us the path he would like to fast forward his cue ball to. Brush the eight ball. All right, this is pretty much connect the dots. But meaning the five will automatically give him position on the six. Straight in shot on the six will automatically give him position on the eight. He will Draw his cue ball ever so slightly back so that the eight will automatically give him position on the nine. Meaning minimal cue ball movement, minimal risk, minimal talent required to clear these balls and take a 4-2 lead. Game number seven, Joshua to break from the opposite side that Jonas is breaking from. We'll look for the eight in the corner pocket. Ooh, got kicked away. Did make the one though. The one ball is the, uh, one of the only predictable balls if you don't make it into the side. From the side that Joshua is breaking from, it will then travel to the top right corner of the table. But if you make it, the blue two is wrapped randomly and so that's hard to predict or impossible to predict where that's gonna end up. Nice. So 
No jumping available here. So he needs the kick. Kind of wants to kick his cue ball towards the right side pocket. I always like it if there's a pocket. Something something that you've kicked at before, which can help you make help you make the kick on the two. Because now in essence he wants to kind of kick it towards the left knuckle, the lower knuckle of the right side pocket. Nice hit. Careful with that cue ball here. Yeah. Spun into the top right. Joshua looking to get back to game winning ways. Nice little fall for the right spin. Ooh, slightly bridging over, especially for a left handed player with a right hand bridge hand. Joshua very reliable with those slight elevation long pots. Within the last five years or so we've just seen how incredible the world's top players are at potting balls. You, know, you have uh, Jason Shaw, Joshua Filler, maybe the best ball potters in the world. Okay, Jonas to break, still has a chance to take a 5-3 lead though if he breaks and runs. Again overcut the one ball, did make two balls in the lower corner pocket. Again, cue ball, stayed south, that's where he centered himself. And then also you have a big chance to snooker yourself, as he maybe didn't do or could have done. Opener there. Beautiful. So this one. Nice and straightforward, and his cue ball will automatically roll into position for the four. Any kind of roll of the white ball after hitting the two ball will give him a shot on the four. As long as you don't make yourself end up straight in. This is very good, I think, yeah. So, top left spin. We'll make him spin out of the top left corner and then miss the right side pocket. These are very reoccurring figures for rotation players. There's three rail positions he just played. A very regular occurrence. Watch out for this bouncing cue ball. Okay. Needn't have worried now because there was no ball he could potentially snooker himself behind playing it like that. So a bit of left spin, tip of left spin, should make his cue ball travel back to where it is now. That would be ideal. Oh, he's looking at, okay. he's looking at adding the bottom right spin, drawing it into the bottom left corner, not the pocket of course, with the two rails there. Ooh. Okay. Nice. This seven and eight ball for a five three lead. We should make him feel pretty good. Of course Joshua to break. Nice. But having a two game lead after eight games of alternate break is sometimes all you can ask for. All right, here we go. Trying to make the brown seven bottom right, one ball left side. And made both. What will his view be on the blue two? A nice view. For most of us, this will be a fairly good opportunity. For Joshua, this is a great opportunity. Hanger, isn't it? 
or a potting monster like Joshua. <gasps> Commentator's curse. Wow. Okay, so no attacking option available for Jonas I mean, unless he wants to go out and bank it top left, but he won't do that. Looking for the full ball cover. Good cue ball there. Hart jumped this and the eight and four ball may also be in the way. And then it's impossible to jump it. So kicking. Hard to get away with this. Yeah. Ooh. Hit both posts as a side pocket. That's a pretty good result. So close to the two ball that he can't really do much with it, so. Oh, he's gonna try to pull it as well. So he does have a little bit of distance between two ball and two ball to achieve the potting angle. Playing with bottom left. Nice. Ooh, yes. Alright. Good shot though. And like to uh, play the game with the opportune spirit as he did there with his cue ball, of course. Could have snookered himself behind the eight. I think more often than not he wouldn't have, so attacking option chosen by Jonas. Paying dividends at the moment. He's got himself a chance to take a six three lead. As I say that, it gives away the chance for a 6-3 lead. Often is the case, and let's see how that plays out here, but Joshua in the latter half of the match often only gets better, you know. There we go, kick and scratch. Still though, you would expect Joshua to take himself back to 5-4, but then it will be Jonas breaking. So, we'll still have a chance to take another 6-4 lead. But he will be kicking himself, sitting in that chair, out of our view. A bit too straight on the 6 ball. Meaning his cue ball is hard to maneuver to place it such that he can make the black in the side pocket, which seems to be its natural pocket. So we'll accept this shot. We'll have to. Okay. Joshua Filler taking us back to trailing only by one. Four racks to five. Now, let's see if he hits the one ball a bit thicker. Still trying to make the red three bottom left. No, too thin. I mean, he will, of course, have noticed this, and he's trying to cut it thicker. As you can see, he's pointing where he would love his cue ball to have been. But that's unachievable if you hit the one if you cut the one ball like that so for those of you learning the cut break or have never attempted the cut break you're really trying to almost hit the one full on from where you're breaking but hitting it the slightest bit from where Jonas is breaking if you're from his viewpoint the slightest bit to the right of center one ball Would you take this push out? He's going to try to cut it in. There's no automatic position on the three. You might try to snooker him back, actually. And where is this cue ball going for position? Hoo -hoo. Yeah. Nice little result there. Either way, of course, he would have had a shot at a safety. Or I mean, this is a, a great result. But again, you know, if you attack. You make that cue ball travel towards the red ball as it was. 
a lot of times something good may happen, especially as well. It depends on your kind of positive or negative approach to the game. So he needs to come back all the way north of the table for position on the five. Wants to have somewhat of an angle on the five, but you'd imagine he's not going to land dead straight. In essence, that's a bit too much angle. Uh, it's just okay. And roll this in, all with a bit of right spin, and shoot the seven in the left side pocket. Yeah, so a lot of room here. He would have had a shot, and or a workable angle. And the last game. Do you think that was the chance and the last chance that Jonas will have to take such a significant lead? Or any lead at all? You know, often Joshua runs away after this and wins games 9-5, 9-6. I'm not trying to predict the future, but this is what I've seen so many times from the killer filler. Leveling things up here at five games apiece. Race to nine, Euro Tour, Petric, Bulgaria. So we saw a bit of a smile from Joshua. He's glad to be on level terms. Again, making the corner ball and the one ball. Then relying on that blue two, and that will do just fine. So now, playing this with a lot of bottom right spin. Trying to make his cue ball after it leaves the two travel straight to the left rail. And because of the right spin, we'll then hopefully travel to the center of table for position on the red three. Don't think he wants to follow this cue ball through. So, as you can see, aiming low. Needs a good stroke, a good aim. Zip. Yeah. This cue ball didn't come straight to that left rail as I advised Joshua to do. He hit it just ever so slightly higher on the cue ball and his cue ball, even though it had right spin when it traveled off of that left rail, just didn't have enough to come back up far enough. Anyway, safety behind the green six, thin slice on the three ball. Ooh. I think in general, even though it's got a lot better, I think it may still be one of the weak points, Joshua's safety game. Maybe also because he yeah, seems to have the, the potting power and run out power to just run through opponents, even though he may sometimes miss safety opportunities like this to create chances. So Jonas tried to bank, hit it too straight, but missed it in a professional way. Try to bank the three towards the seven and leave it on the right rail, just below the right side pocket. Cutting it thin from here and trying to leave the three where it is and get snooker behind the nine is just not going to happen. It's such a hard shot. Theoretically possible, but low chance of success. So, wow, these balls really bounce off the rails more than I think they would. I think they're also caught catching Joshua off guard. So, Jonas with a chance to win the game that Joshua broke. So important. These alternate break race to nine only matches. And you can see with the cut break, I mean, not many clusters to speak of. It's really a run out kind of game with these breaking rules. Bit more angle on the six than he wanted. But. Ooh, see, watch now for that cue ball. See, rolling up much further than 
It's really this bottom short rail that is just turbocharged. I think that is the one thing I noticed myself when I was playing my professional pool career. These dynamic tables that often it's the case that not all s all is it going to be? <laughs> not all six rails of the table have the same bounceability. So they are some of them bounce, some of them don't, and that's what I <coughs> noticed and found hard to play on. I think tables like Brunswick's, Diamonds, those brands just have a bit more quality and also have a more solid body of wood behind the rail and the rubber, which helps. Okay, 6-5 the score. Now, so he's trying to bring his cue ball in a straight line towards the left rail, or draw it back ever so lightly under the left side pocket. That's way too low again. It helps you to make that pink four, as you can see, it disappear. I mean, he's, you know, sometimes you will get a shot on the lowest ball. But his cue ball will never travel higher than the nine ball, let's say, after the break. All right, so where does this three ball go? Ooh, that's going to be really close, you know. So let's say, oh, he needs a, first of all, he needs a quality draw stroke here to get a shot on the two on the right side. Ooh, oh, that's the way to play it. So he could cut it in the side and break open the three eight cluster. But I think he's envisioning he's got a shot on the three so he wants to keep a bit of a high position about 10 degree angle on this three ball Joshua I might call a referee and uh, this should be all right it's very straight though I think he's going to draw his cue ball back should be able to draw his cue ball back with a bit of bottom right spin as long as he doesn't draw it back to the right rail and then snipper spin himself behind the green six. Okay, we did go for it. Did have ooh again. The cue ball rolls longer than I would have expected it to after I see it the way the speed he played it at and the way it kinda of went into its the second rail, but then it seems to roll for ages. Which is not a cloth issue, but I think it's more a bouncy rail issue. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Oh, another chance missed. So in this match, often Jonas with the first chance to take a two or three game lead and he's squandered about four or five chances. Which if you would have told him that prior to this match taking place against Joshua Filler he would, have, he would have said well I need to convert have a better conversion rate of opportunities than that now does this brown 7 go into this corner pocket nearest us doesn't look like it does it or is he going to pot it in the right top corner pocket and play his cue ball with a lot of right spin and zigzag, right, left, right, to shoot the brown in the same pocket. Yes, he will. Again, though, that left rail bounced more than. And I wonder if if Joshua notices. I wonder if he's just thinking, well, my stroke tempo is off. I mean, I promise you that certain rails on this table are bouncy meaning they come off almost at a higher speed than they go in. Wow. The potting talent of Joshua Filler. He's got a cut. With this angle, his cue ball is going to come straight down the table. Will it come st and it will need it to come straight back up as well. Watch it bounce. It's not easily hard enough. As you thought it may have been too soft. Mm. 
Okay, well, good for us. Nice and exciting score line. Six apiece, race to nine. A maximum of five games to play. And still all tied up. Two balls vying for the bottom right corner pocket there. Can see the left side of the one, but this is not cuttable. I mean, theoretically it would be, but that's... You have to hit it as thin as you possibly could and then of course you lose the control of the cue ball because you have to hit it at a certain speed to make the one ball reach the pocket so it can still push out hmm. would rather not push out and would rather try to maybe cut it safe and bring his cue ball behind the green six blue two that would mean that he probably exposes the one ball over the right, top right corner pocket. Hmm. What would you do here, viewers at home? Think along with me here. What would you do to push out? And you can push out and leave the cue ball on this right rail, right in between the red ball and the seven ball. But of course. A view on the one ball. Yeah, a bit of a shot decision conundrum here. Nothing obvious. roll the nine ball into the six ball and then this cue ball would travel somewhere near the orange ball see he's trying to create the cluster so now the three and the four are the other side of the table and the five nine is tied up it's not just a battle for the one ball because I think well, someone at some point in time measured it and noticed that he or she who pushes out more than often, more often than not, loses the game. But not if you create clusters like this. Alright, but even so, oh, I don't think the 5 9 carom is on. possible you know the nine ball can still hit the the rail it's closest to let's say and still go into the top left corner pocket it's not like it needs to travel straight towards the corner pocket only for it to be accepted by the gravity phenomenon but I could try to look at safety here I mean, three thousand Looks like a double kiss trying to snooker the cue ball behind the pink four and sending the one ball up table. Interesting game, this most interesting game in my eyes anyway, pattern wise and tactics wise. Mm. What is Joshua gonna do? Again, see, he's, I mean, he was trying to keep position for the two ball in the left side pocket, but Joshua is not gonna overrun his cue ball by 
by that far as he did there. So it's really a bouncy rail situation. So it hasn't been a lot of fun yet for Joshua, although we did see him smile in the previous game when he tied it up six games apiece, but frustrating afternoon so far for that killer filler. Ooh, what to do now? Can cut this in. There's no way you can break it open now or get position on the pink four to try to break it open. So it's almost like he has to pop the four ball and then play safe off the five ball again. Again, disappointment. Bewilderment more in Joshua's body language. So, kind of wants to keep his cue ball. Well, he still thinks, or it's more wishful thinking, that he thinks he can make the 5 9 carom. Or else he want to keep his cue ball somewhere in the line where it is now to play safe. But he's going for the attack. That is as good a position as he could have played. So hit the five ball as thin as you can, maybe even with a bit of left spin. So you can straighten out the nine ball with your left spin. Yeah, nice. Can you make it almost seems like not a problem at all. Okay. Game 14. Now nah, that's a better cut break. But then he didn't make the corner ball. And no ball at all. <laughs> That's crazy. With all of the overcut breaks, he made the corner ball, which is more likely then, and didn't get position. Now he gets position on the one ball and didn't make the corner ball. It's always something with this game, isn't it? Okay, so Joshua, with his first chance, after taking a one-game lead, to take the game that Jonas broke. But now, see this cue ball? Rolls on for so long, he would have, you know, now he has too much angle and has to keep position on the three ball where his hand is now. So, Joshua not enjoying things so far, but he must secretly also know this is his chance to take a two game lead. Such a competitive character, as you may have noticed from his reactions in winning certain matches and tournaments on the biggest of stages. Ideal position this. Draw his cue ball back or stun it to the other side of the table for position on the four. Center table position, or a bit straighter on the orange five. For a nice, nicely maneuverable cue ball towards the green six. Well, we know the drill of what his plans are from here on in. Let's see if he can execute. See, again, the cue ball rolls. Whoa. Rolls about two, three revolutions further than he, you know, he definitely played that with the right speed. Well, not for this table, but for any other table. It's very disappointing to see in my mind, though, at you know, the top European tour. Yeah, one of the most important matches of the tournament so far, that you have material to deal with, which is just very inconsistent. So the ref making sure Joshua doesn't Bridge over and touch the seven ball. Ooh, overcut it. <sighs> Didn't give the pot away. Now did he give the bank away? Is this bankable? Yeah. yeah, on these rails, which are so reactive and so bouncy, it might come off so straight that he is able to make the bank. I think he's going for it, ladies and gentlemen. Most important shot of the rack or the match so far. Could play safe. Yep, that's what he did. 
So a bit of patience shown here by Jonas. Can he see part of the fireball? If he can, he might try to bring his cue ball back where it is now, or even behind the six ball. Cue ball rolls on normally very long. Whew. So Jonas with a testing pot here. Good thing is though, if you make it, the reward is the most likely chance of winning this rack. So this five ball, to square things up at seven apiece, Jonas hasn't faced adversity like trailing in this match yet. So this will be a test of nerves, aiming, and staying still. Ooh, nine ball? No. <laughs> Again, that five ball would have never normally bounced off that bottom rail so hard. That's a pretty great safety shot. Uh, so Joshua trying to cut the five ball on the right, sending it towards the black, and his cue ball trying to get it behind the green six over two, three rails. One. Ooh, way too thick a hit. Try to cut it in top right, bringing his cue ball back three rails for position on the six. Too thin, but that is the good way to miss it, if anything. All right, so one rail kick, or potentially two rails if he hits the top short rail as well. Five ball at such a distance from that rail that he's got quite a few ways of hitting it and making it. So Joshua is just trying to find parallel lines, as you could just see him aim there. It's all about speed, this. Ooh, exciting game, kicking, safeties, lucky escapes, missed opportunities, clusters, difficult to think of shot making decisions. Does this bank go? Is the eight ball in the way? Jonas walking around the table pretty positively, so I think he feels he's got an opportunity. Body language fooled me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Joshua will again try to get his cue ball to roll where his cue is pointing now. Or behind the 9, or behind the 8, or behind the 7. He will ex expose the five ball to the top right corner pocket, but too thick a hit. That cue ball rolls on for ages, so should be okay. Wow. How's he gonna hit this? I'm like this. Oh, what a hit. No, good hit. Hard to get away with it, though. So Joshua, with a self-created chance to take an 8-6 lead, and he will be breaking. So as I said at the beginning, the loser is match We'll then play a loser's qualification match to get into the single elimination best 32 players section. It always stays at a race to nine, these Euro Tours. First round to the grand final. All races to nine, alternate break. Okay. 
two ball, corner pocket, one ball stays on the table, should give him a shot. Gets a cut into the side. Naturally his cue ball would run into the nine, but with a bit of screw back, he should be able to bend it, the cue ball in between the nine and three ball. And adding a bit of right spin, so it spins out of this bottom left corner towards position on the three ball. Nicely done. All right, Joshua knows this is the time to make no mistakes. Because this might be the only chance you get to win the match. Is he gonna shoot the four ball top left or top right? Top left, you'd imagine. Oh, okay, nice. Narrow route there that he had to run his cue ball through. That did so excellently. Not the best position on the five, but can still draw his cue ball straight to the left rail and then add a bit of right spin again to make it spin towards where he is now, somewhere thereabouts. Yeah, Joshua definitely a great, a great closer of matches. Yeah, and then it kind of comes down to, you know, the four or five opportunities that Jonas missed. I mean, everybody misses opportunities at some point in the match usually, but four or five chances to take a two, three game lead. It's too many to miss. So this will see Joshua, the killer filler, beat Jonas Soto with this nine ball he's going to be shooting at now. This nine for a 9-6 victory. All right, Joshua into the next round. We thank you very much for watching. We appreciate your company. And uh, do have a look at the Billiard Network library. As you can see there, Joshua just rolling the ball into the rails and just having a look at it, the bounce ability. Nice that the players are talking about what went wrong, what could have done better. So good friends off the table. Nice to see. Some good sportsmanship. And uh, yeah, we thank you for watching. My name is Rico Dix, your narrator for this nine ball match. And we will see you for another match very soon. Ciao.